Chuck Holton, great to have you back here in, uh, in the land. Tell us, uh, it's been eight months since October 7th. Where do you see the war after this time? Uh, well, you mean where it is right now, yeah. what, what sure. we're looking at? You know, when I first came here on the 9th of October, two days after the attack, everything was in chaos. Everything was closed down. People were very worried. They were very scared. I got guns pulled on me everywhere I went because they were so worried about terrorists running sure. around. And what we've seen is that it's gone from being, because that, that was a very, very out of the ordinary event. Um, but now it's become ordinary. And so what we've seen is that this war, even within Israel, people that live here, they've gotten inured to it. They've gotten used to it. And so um, they're still very concerned, obviously, especially more so mm -hmm. here. But in the United States, uh, it, it's hard because the news exists to report the out of the ordinary. It's hard sometimes for people in the States to continue to care because now what was out of the ordinary has become ordinary here. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, more rockets from the north. Oh, more fighting in the south. Uh, and yet the people here in Israel are still hurting. There's still 100,000 people that are stuck in hotels. Imagine living in a hotel for eight months with your kids in one mm -hmm. room. I mean, this is what they're having to deal with. And not being able to go to your job. Not being able to go to your school. Imagine getting to the point where the air raid sirens are just normal for you. I just came from Jish in the north. It's just outside of the evacuation zone. So people are living there and they're under attack by Hezbollah every single day to the point where their kids are still just playing in the streets and they, they hear that siren go off and they just, eh, you know, mm -hmm. it's become normal. Yeah. And I think there's real danger in that because you get this normalcy bias that will if things escalate quickly, especially in the north, uh, we'll get a lot of people killed and um, again, cause Americans to sort of stop praying for and supporting Israel. So I think we need to be diligent to continue to think of our brothers and sisters here mm -hmm. and to continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And um, that's what we're trying to do is continue to get that word out. Yeah, yeah. You were just up in the north and it's, it seems to escalate. Uh, there were a lot of fires uh, this week. And uh, how would you describe the situation and how much more serious is that than Hamas down in the Gaza Strip. The number of rockets coming across from Lebanon is at an all-time high now. Uh, it's higher than it was at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're talking about uh, month over month from April to May, they saw a 50% increase in the number of drone attacks, a lot more drones coming across. And that, that says to me that Hezbollah is being supplied with those drones. They're not, because it's newer technology, it's not likely that they had those drones in storage for the last 10 years and they're just pulling them out like the rockets and shooting mm -hmm. them. They're getting those drones from Iran right now. And that means that there's, there's a pipeline coming from Iran. That's a big problem that Israel is trying to address right. and needs to address in Syria because that's that land bridge, right? right? Um, the, the forest fires and stuff that are starting, the, the Iron Dome system is not, it doesn't shoot down, uh, a missile or a drone or anything unless it's heading for a populated area. But the problem is if it lands in an open field, then it catches that field on fire and we're seeing massive fires up there. Mm -hmm. Suffice it to say that if Gaza was not the focus of everything right now, everybody would be so concerned about what's going on in the north right. that that would be its own war. And the people up there are very concerned that they're going to have to deal with this at some point by a ground invasion. Uh, personally, it, it just from what I've seen in the last week up there, I don't believe that a ground invasion is imminent, in, in, meaning in days or even weeks, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it could change at any time. Right. And uh, like I say, at some point, Israel is going to have to deal with that. If they can't do it diplomatically, they're going to have to do it militarily. Yeah, yeah. So we have the north, we have... Uh, Israel right now on the southern border in Rafah, right now on the Egyptian-Israeli border. Uh, how can people be informed and also how can people be praying right now? Well, we could obviously need to pray that, uh, my, my prayer is always that God would thwart the plans of evil men. Uh, we don't know who's, you know, God, God knows the heart. And so if, if we pray that God will thwart the plans of evil men, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, but specifically for the, the troops that are in Rafah, they say that the, some of the fighting that's happening in northern Gaza right now is the most intense fighting that they have ever seen in this war. And uh, we don't hear a lot about 
about that in the news. So we need to be praying for those troops that are still there. There are a lot fewer troops that are doing the fighting mm -hmm. now, and that's a big problem. Yeah. Chuck Colton, great to be with you. We'll be praying. And, and how do we uh, find you on uh, YouTube? The Hot Zone with Chuck Colton, or just go to CBN's YouTube channel, and I'll be there almost every night. All right, Chuck. See you there. All right. Take care.